Okay, so I'm going to talk about the GLP-1 devices and of course Professor Taki will go more about that topic but let me show you what we have in front of us in a second. So, hello Professor hello. and we have all of this today we'll be discussing. So keep tuned. Uh, mini tutorials. So before we talk about the GLP-1 devices, we want to know what is GLP-1. So GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide. So it is a peptide hormone which is responsible for insulin secretion in the body. GLP-1 has many actions. So one of the actions of GLP-1 is to actually stimulate the beta cells and secrete out insulin in a glucose-dependent manner, meaning that if the body hasn't got high blood sugar level, it will not then release the insulin. It also has a beneficial effect on the weight. So it slows down the stomach emptying. So therefore patients feel fuller. It also works centrally in the hypothalamus and suppresses the appetite over there. And also it makes the uh, liver and pancreas work less harder because normally in the type two diabetics, there is excess of glucagon. So this also suppresses the excess glucagon and also um, reduces the uh, gluconeogenesis, which also all in turn make hyperglycemia worse. So that's how the GLP-1 works. In type two diabetics, there is lack of GLP-1 hormone. Therefore, they require external GLP-1, which is given by an injectable form. But nowadays we also have a novel molecule, which is an oral version of it, but it's quite uh, recent and new and works equally the same but however for this video we will talk about the different types of GLP-1s and uh, the different devices we will show. So the originally the GLP-1s came along the very first one was Biata which was twice a day. We don't use that anymore because we had better options such as once daily and once weekly. So the once daily ones are two which are available. The first one is called lixizanatide or luxumia and the pen looks like this this is just a demo pen but the original one will look slightly different and it has got a slightly different device mechanism rather than turning the uh, uh, knob off and on what you do is you just attach the needle just like you would do for an insulin pen and then you would activate the pen so there is an arrow over here so you do that and then you would just use the area where you have to go and simply uh, inject that and that will give us one dose one fixed dose this comes in uh, two doses 10 milligram and 20 milligrams so if you need intensification you can go on to the higher dose so this is the original once daily uh, glp1 which is called luxemia or lixisanatide it is not very popular because it's thought that it's not very potent uh, the next one, which is once a day one, is called Lyraglutide or Victoza. Again, this is a demo pen, but it works slightly different from that, but it's very similar to the insulin pens. So it comes in a single pen, and again, you use the same uh, technique. The needle is screwed on onto it, and then this pen has got three doses. So this is the titration of this GLP-1, which is Lyraglutide or Victoza. As you can see on the dial here, you can turn it to... 0.6 then 1.2 and 1.8 is the maximum dose so when we start the lyraglutide we start off with the lowest dose which is 0.6 and that we do for seven days after seven days we increase the dose to 1.2 and then you carry on for several weeks or months and then when you repeat the hdfnc and if you need a higher push or if you think that the, the drug has become plateaued the effect is plateaued you can push the dose up to 1.8 but then there are more side effects with that. Um, so I'll talk about side effects in the end. And then this is very, very simple. So you just in, uh, put the needle on, you set up the dose, whatever it is, 0 0.6 or 1.2, and then you simply inject like an insulin pen like that and bring it back to zero. So that's very, very simple and straightforward, uh, which is lyraglutide or Victoza. The next one uh, which came in the market was many years ago, this is, was the once weekly agent which was the bijuron weekly originally 
Pulse Weekly came in before even this. There was a while where it used to have to mix and inject and suck up with the syringe. But then this device came, which was very cumbersome and people weren't very happy. It had a two, three step process to inject. So that was then replaced by a simpler device, which is more or less like a EpiPen, which is this one. So in order to use that, you got to do a couple of things. There are three steps to it. Number one step is to shake it, shake it vigorously to about 15, 20 seconds. So you keep shaking it in this way. And if I bring it closer to you, if the window over here shows like this, it means that the liquid is not mixed. It should look like this, uniform like milky. So until it looks like that, you keep shaking it. Once you've shaken it and you're happy with the mixture, then you have to bring the unlock button. So this is at the moment locked. So you just simply unlock it. So the device is now ready to be injected. And the next step is to take the uh, cover off. When you take the cover off, this comes up as a pop-up. Once it's pop-up, it is ready to, uh, to use. So then you choose the site, which is the usual sites across the abdomen. And you simply inject it by putting it uh, across the skin and pressing it just like an EpiPen. And you got to wait for at least 15 to 20 seconds up until the whole of the injection is given. And the way to know is that yellow bar will come up, which shows that the whole thing, the piston is pushed. So it should show this yellow uh, bar, which means the injection has been given. If the patient pulls in too quickly, that means that may just come out on uh, in the ground. So make sure that you in instruct them carefully. So each pen, this pen is a single device. So once this is used, you don't need to then put the cap back. You simply get rid of it. And this one, you can't see any needle. Just like an EpiPen, you can dispose it off anywhere. So this is very, very simple. Again, you don't need to put any needles on it. It is a self uh, working device and it's a single use device. So a box of a uh, month will have four pens. The difference between the other ones was a single pen which would be used uh, for about a whole month or sometimes you need two pens with it. So that's that, but this is a single use device, so you get four pens. The other one which came after that was called Dula Glutide or the commercial name is Trulicity, which looks like that. It's again very, very similar to the Bigeron, but it's much simpler because you don't need to shake or do anything like that. It is ready to go. So you have the button over here which shows uh, the arrow uh, locked so you need to unlock this and then you need to take this cap off which is this cap you take it off and after that this is ready to go then you choose the site where you got to go but this is slightly tricky because you need to hear two clicks the first click will activate the device and hear it carefully and wait for the second click you heard the second click only after the second click they are supposed to remove the pen if they did it with first click all the liquid would just fall onto the ground so they need to wait for the second click to here and then they dispose of this pen now this one again uh, has got now several doses it used to come originally in just two doses 0 0.75 which was for those people who are very sensitive to glp1 the side effect then you would give them a very low dose but generally it was recommended to start everybody with the dose of 1.5 but you can still go on from 0 0.75 but it has got four titration doses now so 0 0.75 to 1.5 and then 3 milligram and the max dose is 4.5 milligrams and this is decided by the response of hba1c reduction and the weight loss and if you feel that at one dose say 1.5 there is no more further reduction of hba1c or weight loss then you escalate the dose to on your review to three milligram or to the maximum dose of 4.5 milligram depending on the patient's tolerance to side effects. So that's the dulaglutide or trulicity. And then you have uh, another weekly agent. Again, this is slightly different because again, this will go back to a single pen, whereas the bijuron, uh, bijuron and the trulicity were single use device. So once you use the pen, you throw it away, uh, these ones, but these ones, the Victoza or Lyraglutide and Ozempic or Semaglutide, you don't throw it away, you keep it till it is finished. So this comes in three titration doses. The first starting dose is 0 0.25 and after a month, you escalate the dose to maintenance dose of 0 0.5 and then if you need a further push, you can go to the maximum dose of one milligrams. 
but a lot of people are happy with 0.5 milligrams but if they are not losing enough edge you can push it to one milligram this is very similar to the lyra glutide you take off the cap and again you put the uh, needle on just like the insulin needle and then you would uh, turn on the device but this one hasn't got any titration doses unlike the lyra glutide or Ritosa. it has got only one dose which is 0.25 so each pen will have predetermined dose so this is only a 0.25 pen the 0.5 pen will be slightly bigger and you can only dial it to 0.5 there is no kind of uh, titration in this pen it is already preset dose the one milligram pen when you turn it it will go to one milligram so you start off with 0.25 milligram and this is like a, a, a spring device so you don't have to press it it's like uh, works very quickly so you just dial up the dose and then you inject in the area that you want to and it will turn itself back to zero like that so once you do that you ask the patient to count to six one two three four five six and then take off if the patient takes off quite quickly there may be drops coming out and then they may not be able to get the full dose so you recommend that and then you get rid of the needle in the shops so this one, these devices involve putting needle and getting rid of that. The other two, the Bijuron and the Trulicity, don't need the needles because it is already a single device. Then these are all for diabetic patients and they're licensed for diabetics. But there is another product which is for non-diabetic obese patients. And that one is a similar molecule as, uh, as uh, Victoza. It's still called... The molecule inside is lyraglutide, but the pen is called Saxanda. The reason it is Saxanda is it has got a higher dose than the diabetic dose. The diabetic pen, which is called Victoza, has the maximum dose of 1.8, whereas the pen, which is Saxanda, firstly is licensed for non-diabetic obese patients, and it can go up to 3 milligrams. As you can see, the previous pen was only 0 0.6, 1.2 and 1.8 but here you can go up to 2.4 and the max dose is 3 milligrams so that's the only difference otherwise the device is very similar you just simply again attach the needle and uh, you just dial up the dose again 0 0.6 uh, in the first week and then you press it and you just take it back to, to zero and then you can pick up the needle but this has a different type of titration so the maintenance dose of Saxanda is 3 milligrams daily. So this is a daily one. The other two were once weekly. So what you do is the first week you inject, the patient injects 0 0.6. After 7 days, you escalate the dose to 1.2. After 7 days of 1.2, you go up to 1.8. And then after the 7 days of being on 1.8, you go up to 2.4. Then after the 7 days of being 2.8, four then you go up to three milligrams so it will take about five weeks to get to the full maximum titrated dose uh, patients can slow it down if they get side effect with uh, any kind of dose increment they can stay there for a little longer and then move on there is flexibility to that so all the glp ones have very similar side effects which are most commonly reported gi side effects more commonest ones are nausea diarrhea constipation so one of the things that you've got to instruct these patients because remember all diabetic patients obese patients are used to eating larger portions what this pen will do is to kind of give them an artificial gastric band they will restrict their ability of eating the gastric emptying will physically slow down but if they start eating with the same speed and with the same quantity the stomach will not shift with the same rapidity as it used to be and then the food will regurgitate. So most of these people will feel uh, intense reflux symptoms, if not nausea and vomiting. So the key instructions are very clearly noted that stop eating at the first sign of fullness. You've got to write it down clearly. First sign of fullness, even though their plate is full of food, they got to waste it because if they then are tempted that oh i what do, should i do i've got still the food in my plate they're going to just throw up the first sign of fullness stop eating because it is mediated through centrally and also through your stomach so if they keep filling up give it them example of a conveyor belt if the airline keeps throwing the uh, suitcases and the conveyor belt stops what happens they just fall to the floor 
So you got to keep it going in order to transit the food. So if the transit is slowed down, they got to slow down the food intake. So they need to do that, number one. Number two is to control the nausea. They need to drink cold water. They need to restrict the portion sizes and they can eat like small portions. And then if they need to eat, they can eat later on, but not one big portion. They should avoid too much starchy foods and too much fiber foods because that will also cause them GI side effects. Uh, for, for side effects, you can give them temporarily an anti-emetic or if they have constipation, you can give them any laxative to support them. Remember, the side effects are transient. In most cases, when the patients persevere with the therapy after a couple of weeks, the, trans, the side effects would go away. I have majority of the patients who don't have complaint and in fact, most of the patients are quite happy. There will be a small minority of patients who will not tolerate and they have to discontinue but discontinuation rates are very very low a thing or two which are caution is that patients who've got previous history of pancreatitis there is a question about all glp1s uh, in their label that you got to be cautious and maybe avoid it but i want to tell you why it is a risk so any therapy which will cause weight loss is going to cause hyper concentration of bile in the gallbladder and when that happens patients then develop gallstones and the gallstones when they dislodge they are going to cause a certain type of pancreatitis which is called gallstone pancreatitis it's not just that oh you inject glp1 and then you're going to get pancreatitis there is a mechanism behind it there is a process behind it so remember because of the weight loss potential all those patients are going to lose uh, five kilos ten kilos couple of stones they can then develop as a side effect, uh, as I explained to you, physiologically gallstones. And then that gallstone, if it kind of releases from the gallbladder, it can get stuck into the bile duct. And that is the way that they will get pancreatitis. But it is not a very common side effect. It is rare. So you just need to counsel the patient. Most patients are okay with it. And I haven't really come across a single patient so far in my clinical practice that had gallstone induced pancreatitis but you got to just watch them and uh, just counsel them apart from that they're very safe now we talk about the positive effects of the glp1 therapies the almost all the studies have shown very good beneficial data towards cardiovascular outcomes and which is called the mace outcome major adverse cardiovascular effects so varying from 13 percent reduction to 26 percent reduction is shown so in the lyra glutide the study was called leader it showed 13 percent reduction in major adverse cardiovascular event which was non-fatal mi non-fatal stroke and cv death the similar trial was done for a semaglutide or ozempic which was called sustained six and it showed even more robust uh, lowering which was 26 percent reduction in mace outcomes and the dulaglutide which toricity showed 12 percent reduction the bigeron showed nine percent reduction in mace the lixizanatide was neutral so it neither showed worsening and it was like zero so that's why it wasn't very popular because it hadn't shown in that clinical trial any reduction in the cardiovascular uh, outcomes but generally all the glp ones have got a beneficial cardiovascular uh, role uh, i think that's all for today and we will talk about anything else in future videos i hope that was useful